we're going to look at using the recovery environment provided with Windows 7 and the uh, Vista DVD. And so hypothetically, let's say that for some reason you you, know, you can't boot off your hard drive. You can't have fade and go into advanced boot options. You can't enter safe mode or use last known good configuration. And this can happen a lot. You know, you could get a boot sector virus, could wipe out the MBR, the master boot record. Um, boot manager could be missing. Um, the BCD data store could be corrupt or it could point to the wrong partitions in the wrong locations. Someone could have repartitioned the system and then rebooted. You could have a corrupt file system and you need to run check disk. There's all kinds of reasons why you might not be able to boot. So um, a very useful tool would be the recovery environment. And there are basically two ways to do this. When you can't boot off the hard drive, you can either take a flash drive um, and you can put Windows 7 on the flash drive and boot off of that or you can boot off the Windows 7 DVD. Um, now, I like to use flash drive because it's faster and more convenient. You can carry it around in your pocket. Um, I carry a 32 gigabyte flash drive and a 16 gigabyte flash drive in my pocket all the time. and I have about a dozen different operating systems on these flash drives. And um, if you want to make one, go to pendrivelinux.com and download the multi-boot tool. It's all free. But um, you know, I keep like 32 and 64-bit Windows 7 and Vista and XP Service Pack 2 and Service Pack 3. I keep... 32 and 64 bit versions of Ubuntu. Um, in addition, there's lots of free tools you can download. Um, Clonezilla, I, um, I use to you know clone images of hard drives. I also keep an image of Ghost on my flash drive, and I can run Ghost from the flash drive. There's password editing tools, so if someone forgets their password, you can you know load up Windows 7 or Vista or XP and reset their password. Or if an account is disabled, you can enable the account. Um, you know, there's a memory test tool and hard drive testing tools and information gathering tools. It's all these wonderful free tools. I guess I'm putting in a plug for pen drive Linux, aren't I? Um, but anyway, that's, you know, either way, you'd want to go into the BIOS uh, or the CMOS settings and configure it to either boot off of the CD DVD drive, if you're going to boot off the Windows 7 or Vista DVD, to load recovery environment, or to boot off um, the removable drive or your flash drive if you're going to boot off of you know, a, a USB drive uh, or flash drive to, to load the recovery environment. So once you've done that and prepared the BIOS to boot off the correct media, you'll want to go ahead and select it and then start the boot process. And it'll tell you to press any key to boot from CD or DVD, even if you're running off the flash drive because it's just an ISO image of the DVD if you put it on a, a USB stick. So you'll hit any key, I always hit the space bar, and we'll boot up and it'll begin the process of loading into recovery console. And you'll see a welcome screen, just like as if you were going to install Windows 7. So select your language and locality, click Next. Now we don't want to install it because it's already installed. Instead we want to perform repairs. So I'm going to click this option here. Instead of install, repair your computer. It'll search for Windows installations, but notice it's already found it, but it's in case I had a triple or quadruple or multi-boot, it's looking for other installations. Once it's done, We'll want to click on Next. And now we're presented with the Recovery Tool Options menu. So the System Recovery Options, um, we'll just kind of go through them one by one. The very first one, Startup Repair, it's probably the easiest thing to do. You can run that and it, um, it GUIFically, is that a word? Or it GUIishly, well anyway, it graphically will, <laughs> using the graphical user interface, the GUI, it'll launch a wizard that will try to uh, make the computer bootable again. And it can handle simple things that might be wrong, you know, with the master boot record or just with some of the, the startup files. But it doesn't always work. Sometimes, you know, you, you end up having to kind of escalate 
in your repair attempts a little bit and, and try other tools. That's the very first one I would try because that's probably the easiest one. Next, if that doesn't work, take a look at System Restore. If you have restore points and the file system on the drive is not so badly damaged that you can't access them, or if you were you know, fortunate enough to have backed them up on a removable device, then you can use System Restore and simply restore it to a restore point. Okay, so that's that would be probably the you know the the next easiest thing that you could do if the first option didn't work. Now the third option, system image recovery, it's not a restore point, but that's when you use you know the Windows backup tool to make a complete image copy of your entire hard drive or the partitions on it. And you know with this tool, um, it's nice because you could simply restore an entire image. You know all your your registry database, your software, your settings, your directory structure, all your files, your data, all of that would be backed up. An image is just a snapshot of an entire partition or even an entire hard disk with multiple partitions. And um, so that third option is very powerful. And actually, it's um, a lot better than the old backup tool that was in 2000 Pro and uh, Windows XP Professional. Um, with those operating systems, you would basically install Windows XP or 2000 first and then you would run the tool uh, ntbackup.exe and you would restore from a BKF file. But it took a little bit longer to perform the restore because you had to install the operating system first and then run the backup utility ntbackup.exe to restore the BKF files. Um, and you, you know you could back up the system state data or, you know but this greatly simplifies things by making an image copy and you don't even have to install Windows 7 or Vista first you can simply restore the image. So in that respect it works like third-party tools, um, like an open-source, um, you know, Linux-based free tool I use called Clonezilla, which will also do image copies of partitions or entire hard drives, uh, and also you know paid tools that I use like Ghost. I keep both of those on my flash drive, and you know Ghost is a nice tool that lets you image an entire hard drive and restore it. Um, that's probably the most complete backup, and honestly, I don't sleep easy. I don't rest easy when I have a new system where I've configured it um, and put a lot of work into it until I have a ghost image backup stored on a hard drive or burned onto DVD somewhere and then I can you know sleep easy so to speak so those three tools the next tool is the memory diagnostic tool um, and you know that can be an intermittent issue sometimes you know when you have bad memory you can run one program but you can't run another because of you know the way it accesses memory how much memory it uses um, the memory registries, how, how the memory is addressed, um, so that it can be an intermittent problem. You might be able to boot and then your computer fails. You might not be able to boot at all. Sometimes you boot up and you get a beep code, bad memory, and then sometimes you boot up and, and you don't. So that would be a way to test memory with read and reads and writes. And coincidentally, again, if you go to uh, pendrivelinux.com, sounds like I'm pimping them, doesn't it? Yes, I am. I'm pimping pendrivelinux.com. Why? Because they're great. They're awesome. They give us lots of free tools. Really powerful tools getting. Pendrive Linux, guys, it's even better than uh, the recovery environment. You know, you can put a dozen different operating systems on a flash drive, as well as you know, 20 or 30 different tools to help you repair a system. That in the end are even more powerful than the recovery environment that Microsoft gives you for fixing both Linux and Microsoft uh, Windows machines. Um, but for now, we'll focus on Microsoft's tools and and the recovery environment. So I'm done pimping Pendrive. But go to pendrivelinux.com and uh, pendrivelinux.com, excuse me, and get yourself some of those free, awesome tools. Um, so either way, it also has a memory diagnostic tool. So you could use Pendrive Linux, you could use Windows, but um, and also coincidentally, another intermittent problem is power supplies. So you know you might want to before you are 100% sure that you have a bad power supply if you don't have a power supply tester. Um, check the memory as well. Both of those can create situations where sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, you know, where things just seem odd or weird. But the one option we're really interested in is this last option, the command prompt. Okay, that's the, sort of the final option here, but there are some great command line tools that we can use from this command prompt. Now, it's not the same as the XP Professional or 2000 Professional uh, Recovery Console. Notice how Microsoft changed the name. They call it the recovery environment, not the recovery console. So in the recovery environment, you get a command prompt, but it's not the same as the recovery console. You don't have the same commands. First off, notice when I start it, it puts me in X, okay? And uh, it didn't ask me for a logon or a password. Now, I can use some of the simple DOS commands, you know, the command prompt language that you use with XP in 2000 Pro. So 
for instance, cd is change directory, and that that would recurse out of directory. And I can do also change drive letters or partitions. So I could do c colon, and that would put me onto the c partition. Um, I can use dir to list the directory contents, and I can use mkdir to make a directory. So I have apple and banana, um, and I'll make one called kiwi. I can use cls, dir again. Okay, so I have some of those basic tools, but some of the other tools that we're used to having just aren't there. For instance, if I clear the screen, remember you could type help and get a list of commands. Well, you can't do that in the recovery environment. I'm not sure why Microsoft chose to eliminate that. Uh, I kind of liked being able to get a list of commands. And there, there are other commands, too, that we're used to using. Remember the list services command? That was great. Um, you could list services, and then you could enable or disable them in the uh, in the recovery console but things are different with the recovery environment so it's not not the same for a um, no, for, remember for a boot sector virus with a Windows XP professional in 2000 Pro you could use fix boot and you could use fix MBR but neither one of these tools exist at least in that state in the recovery environment okay um, you do have a couple of tools. Let me do BCD editor. All right. And now I'm not going to repeat the BCD edit tutorial. BCD edit is a very powerful tool for editing the boot configuration in Windows. And there's an entire tutorial just on that. So I'm not going to waste time repeating it. But it, if you're not familiar with BCD edit, it would probably profit you to also go and watch that tutorial on BCD edit. It's definitely a tool you should be familiar with when you are in the recovery environment. Sometimes the BCD data store can become corrupt and you have to rebuild it, and sometimes not even that works. So then you have to export it and then rebuild it, um, or you know, export it, rename it, or delete it, and, and then rebuild it. Um, there's all kinds of situations that can go wrong with you know, the hidden boot folder on the system partition and, and the BCD data store. So that's definitely a tool. Um, this part. I'm going to go ahead and type in this part, and when I launch it, um, let, me, let me just add a question mark, and I'll bring up some of the options here so I can drag this up some. As you can see, there are a whole lot of commands just in this part, but it's, it's a partitioning tool, and if I couldn't get into the environment to partition it graphically, I, I could use this part. Um, you know, display, for instance, display current and supported file systems on the volume, format the volume or partition. So it's kind of a nice command line tool. Of course, coincidentally, there are some great free tools with PenDrive Linux. You could also use Gparted and, uh, you know, other tools. But anyway, let me, let me exit out here and leave this partition and we'll clear the screen so bcd edit this part um, boot recovery is a good tool let me run that boot rec and you can see the, the switches here so you know how you had your old windows xp tools fix mbr and fix boot well there they are but now you have to use them as you know arguments to boot recovery boot rec so in other words um, i could do boot rec and fix mbr and I can do boot rec and fix boot. All right, and that kind of so that if I had a boot sector virus or something was wrong with the MBR, the master boot record, that would fix that problem. Now, a lot of times, you know, things can happen where you might delete some files that are necessary to boot the operating system, like boot manager or things that point to NTOS kernel um, or HAL DLL. There are situations where you might repartition a hard drive, and when you do. Um, the BCD data store no longer knows how to find the operating system where it points to the wrong partition and it can't boot. So if that's the case, you can use boot recovery and scan OS and that'll scan for the operating system entries on the drive. And then last but not least, you can use the command rebuild uh, BCD to do exactly what it says, rebuild the boot configuration database or the BCD data store. And that would also be very useful if, you know, for some reason it had become corrupt or if the drive had been repartitioned and, you know, the BCD database was unable to find a particular operating system that was on the menu. So some very useful and, and cool command line tools. And, of course, there's always check disk, chkdsk, just like you had in 
uh, XP professional and uh, and 2000 professional and I'm gonna do a forward slash question mark which will give you the command switch options to check disk and notice all of the different options here but if I wanted to run that and I had a corrupt file system then a lot of times that could repair the damage and I could also do a deeper surface scan and look for bad clusters there's all kinds of options there um, you know many 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 times this has been a powerful and useful tool that could bring a Windows system back to booting when the file system was corrupt and it just wasn't able to boot just as BCD edit and um, and boot recovery boot you know, B O O T R E C have also been very useful tools to deal with systems that won't boot or that just can't boot alright so you have a lot of options this is just the Windows you know these are just the Windows recovery environment options um, and how they contrast against you know how the Windows 7 and Vista recovery environment contrast against the recovery console in Windows XP Professional in 2000 um, and also remember there are even more powerful even more incredible wonderful tools and they're all free if you'll go to uh, www.pendrivelinux.com and they'll repair and fix and install both uh, Linux and Windows operating systems and if you you know you you may never need to use a slow DVD again you, you know you could you know, at least on a modern mainboard that supports booting off of a, a flash drive or a USB stick